Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and today we're going to look at a punch down tool. We're going to actually look at a kit that's on our website that I think you should have. Um, also, uh, it's going to be on Amazon. I know a lot of people like Amazon. It's easy to order from and everything else and just people feel comfortable with it. But uh, either way, it's fine with us. Buy it from our website, buy it on Amazon. We're happy to sell it to you. And it's uh, today it's going to be a punch down kit. and. Uh, we have all the tools that you need for that punch down kit and it, it, these little extra things along with the punch down tools and the blades really makes it uh, great. Now our punch down tool here is going to have two blades. It's going to have a 110 blade and this is a 110 blade and it's also going to have a 66 block or 66 punch down also. Okay, And that's this one. Notice there's a distinct difference between the two. This one, the blade is across the whole thing. This one, the cutting blade is on top. These are just to push the wires down. Don't use them that much. Mostly, 95% of the time, you're going to use that 110 uh, punch down cutter blade. Okay? So, anyway, let's get started. The other thing I have here is I have a uh, jack puck, and this really makes life a lot easier, let me tell you. Gotta have this uh, cabler. Or if you're just an IT person and you hardly ever do this type of uh, punch down, you still, this is a nice thing to have. And then, of course, my favorite stripper. Um, I know a lot of other people use other strippers, but this thing is so easy to use. And it's so fast and it's nice. It's a low, inexpensive stripper. It also has a 110 punch down here, too. Uh, but that's not very effective. That's not why I use it. I use it because of this little stripper here. And I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay. So let me get started here. So I'm going to put the stripper here, all right, I'm going to slide it on, and what's nice about it is I'm just going to spin it, but the first time I spin it's a little bit, I can feel the drag, and then all of a sudden, like right now, I don't feel any drag, it feels nice, it's nice and smooth. Notice it didn't cut into the wire, if I can get it close, didn't cut into the wire. And these are your four pairs. Now, if you're dealing with anything other than four pair computer cable, I don't know what you're doing. Because today, the standard is four pair. It's a minimum. It's what's used, everything else. And uh, in telecom and in computers and in cabling and everything else, you only use uh, uh, the word pair. You don't say eight wires. I see some people put that on their website. And this is the, the color code direction. Um, blue, orange, green, brown, and of course if we had one more it would be slate, but you don't have one more because you use four pairs in computer cabling, uh, jacks, and telephone. Uh, you know, the, the, some people ask, well, how do you cable for VoIP? Well, it's the same as computers, no difference. So uh, VoIP uh, cabling is exactly the same as computer cabling, and uh, that's how it, it's going to have four pairs, just like this. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I just want to talk about some tools, but I just stripped this now, and I want to talk a little bit about this. I guess it can be diverted here a second. Um, but what I do is reach across, get my handy dandy um, telecom scissors. They're special scissors. They have notches for stripping. They have this little thing you put your your uh, thumb on. That's how you hold these scissors. You don't hold them like traditional. And guys that do cabling and wire splicers and all, man, they are good with this. You can always tell a an old uh, uh, cable guy because he always has this on his uh, on his belt, tool belt. Uh, but I'm going to put a little notch in there. Right? And then I'm going to take my my string here. A lot of people say, well, that uh, helps with uh, stress relief. Nah, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just used for stripping, personally. So I'm going to strip it considerably back. You know, it's about, what, at least uh, an inch. And I'm going to take my telecom scissors, held the right way, and I'm going to cut off. Okay. And a lot of people say, why do you do that? Well, that's just my way of doing it because I ran into a situation in the past where uh, people who, uh, uh, sometimes when you strip the outer shell, you nick the cable, and then you go to punch it all down, and it looks great, and then you punch the last one down, and it falls apart. Uh, because it's been nicked. It breaks. So I'm going to cut off the excess. Now we're going to put this aside because I'm going to tell you all about punch down tools. So please bear with me. 
and again let's get it in the right color code I always like putting it up putting it out right so that's the right color code you don't need to know color code to punch down cables at least my cables I don't know about other people's cables but my cables you don't need it but I always put it in that way um, and it's always called twisted pair or pairs of cable never single wires so I see some people describe these as eight wires it's four pairs same thing but the industry that's what you call it you don't call it eight wires you call it four pairs so um, you know that's that's what it's called that's the industry standards let's look at some of the other tools and then I'm going to punch that down to a jack I have here this is your punch down tool without a blade it doesn't have a blade here what it does have though is a place where you can store a blade and you put it right in there we're going to do that later okay uh, nice thing about this punch down tool is it has two picks they call them picks the nice thing about the picks is when you're in a tight cabling situation and the cable does break on you that you're trying to punch down you can fit that into a group of cables and you can pull out the cable you need also if you got a bunch of cables together you can put this in there and separate them you can do all sorts of things with this blade it's just a general purpose blade but not all punch down tools come with these blades now just to give you a background I've been in IT for uh, oh gosh almost 40 years now uh, as of the date of this recording uh, started out back in 79 I've been cabling forever and a day I'm a licensed cable contractor and we've installed data centers airports shopping malls individual places uh, we did a lot of uh, stores uh, over 6,000 locations throughout the United States so we really do know uh, cabling um, and uh, of course our parent company is the one that does the cabling Nova Voice and Data Systems and uh, uh, this is a tool that I recommend to my technicians I used to buy them tools years ago then I'd just lose them so now I just require they buy their own tools if you're an IT guy though if you're an IT guy and you say well I don't do cabling so why do I need this well you need this because if you need to uh, replace a jack or you do something like that along those lines you're gonna need these the uh, this tool to punch down that jack or, or to correct a cabling issue or to uh, uh, just to do anything and you know when your systems down minutes turn into hours and hours turns into days and uh, if you're calling out your cable vendor uh, well then sometimes those cable vendors uh, take forever to get out there and uh, what happens then is is you're on the hook for all that downtime and everything else also if you're a Microsoft uh, partner let's say and you go out and you casually or occasionally fix things or or you want to open a jack to see if the jack is cabled right and the wire comes out well then you're going to need something like this so it's a really good uh, tool set to have and then you already saw what the stripper does but let's look some more at this okay so this is the business end and what you do is you take one of the blades this is a 110 blade this is the one you're going to use 95 percent of the time you're going to put it in here and you're going to turn it it snaps in place don't know if you can hear it but it snaps in place it's not going to come out and it's not easily turned so it's not going to start rotating on you some of the other uh, El Cheapo uh, tools that I see on the uh, offered on the internet and all um, they're not very good um, and so my philosophy is uh, as I adjust the light my philosophy is um, have quality products um, and if I don't use it then I don't sell it uh, so when, when we're going to look at the jack here in a minute these jacks um, when I install them when our company installs it no voice and data when we install it these jacks have a 15-year warranty and uh, with 6,000 installations oh gosh that has to be more than that that was about 10 years ago I'm probably up to around 8 but I don't I stopped counting um, we work for a lot of big corporations we go into data centers things like that you really need a tool like this and it's not a cheap tool uh, it's inexpensive but it's not cheap it's not going to fall apart on you um, and this is what we use every single day and we use it over and over again every working day these tools are used in our company so uh, let me show you some of the things it does so uh, I, I think I already showed you the pick and all um, did I? I don't know got the pick here yeah I think I did getting old anyway um, you have adjustment here uh, high and low impact and that makes a difference and then you have your blade 
uh, um, what is that blade uh, release so you're gonna see it this way high and low impact braid to release please bear with me I'm actually um, I, I got this camera between my hands and I'm I, uh, yeah, it's a little difficult uh, to concentrate and figure out what's going on with the camera and where I have things located but anyway yeah, blade release. What do you need a blade release for? That's because you put your spare blade right in there. So you drop in your spare blade like that. You turn this and it will drop down. And I'm going to show you that later, how that works. But that's the punch down tool. It's pretty good. And uh, what happens is, as you push, you know, you're pushing down on something. It waits till it gets all the way to the end and it snaps. And that snapping is what actually cuts the cable. So if you look at the 110, you got a push down side and then you have a blade that cuts the excess cable off. So let's look at a jack, okay? So here's a jack and you're going to push down the cable here and you notice there's a little ridge right here. You notice that ridge? I don't know if you can see it. There's a ridge there. So the cable is going to come out across that ridge and then when you push down on it, it's going to snap right there. And uh, let me show you. I have to use this puck tool because I've done it bare hand wise and it can hurt. So I'm going to push it in and you're going to hear the snap. Hear it? You see how it sits in there a little bit of an angle. It's supposed to. So it's push, it'll push the cable down and it will snap right there. And so that snapping is what cuts. Now I've gotten in a habit over the years that I kind of hit it twice. Yeah. I don't know, you do this really fast. It, and then you move on to the next one. So that's pretty much the way I do things. Um, so let's take a look how we punch down. Uh, I'm just going to punch down one, uh, Jack, but remember this puck saves you a lot of time. So let's talk about that. Uh, when I deal with this puck, um, this is what I always have in my toolbox. This is what my guys have in their toolbox. And the reason why is years ago before they invented these pucks, I wish I would have invented them, um, but years before, we would take a piece of uh, plywood, uh, about this size, maybe bigger, smooth off the edges, everything else. And then we would take a piece of cardboard and attach it to the top of the plywood. We'd cut out space to where the back of the jack would fit into the cardboard around it type of thing and stabilize the jack, and we'd use that. And we'd go around holding this piece of wood. Uh, because uh, when the wire comes out the wall, you, you need something solid to push against, and the only other thing you can push against is your hand. And uh, that, after a while, that snapping really hurts, and you can get some bruises uh, in your hand, and it takes a couple days before your hand feels normal. So you really need a uh, jack puck, um, and uh, these are invaluable. And the nice thing about this is it has different areas for different jacks, and so you know the the different makes and models ours fits right there you can also use this one it doesn't fit as, as good um, but you can also do this if you have one of those jacks that come in from the back you know you're punching down from the back uh, this one is not one of those I don't like those jacks particularly um, and uh, all the products you sell on the website are the ones I personally pick out uh, I use for our company uh, let's uh, talk about that. We already talked about this. The cutter, I don't like the punch down, but yeah, worst comes to worst, you can use it. It goes just like that, pushes down, but then you're going to have to cut the excess off. Sometimes you're cutting it, the wire comes loose. So this is what we have here, and we sell this as a kit. We also sell this individually, not the jack. Jacks are sold individually, period. Uh, so these things are sold separately. And so the jack fits, it's a universal puck. Uh, thing. So you have you know different jacks that can fit in there pretty easily, different types of jacks. So if you're an IT guy and you go out and you have to repunch down the jack, um, then probably the cable guys didn't test it, didn't do a good job. Some of these cable guys only test one in five. We test every single one of our jacks. That's why we don't have any go-backs. I've learned the hard way. Um, been doing this for a long time. But uh, you need to test every single jack. But let's say you got a jack, you think it's a jack problem, you open it up and a wire falls off the jack. Well, it's really hard uh, to replace or repair. Uh, but you have different types of jacks. Different contractors use different types of jacks. You may have bought some on the internet. Um, so this little puck with the, the three versions on there of jacks is really great and you can hold it. Or you can just put it on a rug, carpet, whatever your area of the country calls it. Um, 
uh, the nice, uh, when you try to punch down on a carpet, it really doesn't work very well. The jack moves all over the place and wiggles and it's too soft. So you really need something like this. It's light, fits easily in a toolbox. So let's do some punch down, okay? So we're gonna start here. The jack slips underneath. I can look at the camera and the product at the same time, and you can see it in there, how it slips underneath, holds it in place, right? You also have a place that holds the cable, you know, that little snap thing right there. I don't much care for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate, show you a neat little trick, separate these, these cables. And that is you take your, your throwaway plastic casing, and you put it right in there, and then you spin it. Sometimes, especially when you get up in the, the higher categories, I think this is Cat 6, I'm not sure. Um, doesn't really matter. So, you know, you, you want to keep the twist as tight as you can up till the edge of the jack, but it's not like end of the world if you don't get it up there. It's not going to not work or things like that or slow you down unless you're you know, I got six inches of uncabled thing. But if you look on the side of our jacks, there's an A and a B. Um, right there, A and a B. Yes, I gotta look at the camera. A and a B. And um, today, the standard, 90% of the time, 95% of the time is B. Uh, B standard. So, uh, the B standard would be white and blue under the blue pairs. Or the blue pair would be white and blue. Uh, again, you don't need color code uh, to uh, do a jack. In the past, you used to. They would number them one, two, three, four, and you'd have to know what your color code was to do it. And of course, if you're uh, punching down a 66 block, you're going to have to know color code and other areas of work. You're going to have to know it. It's good to know. It's not that hard to learn. Um, it's learning, uh, sort of like learning IP ranges. Uh, once you got it down, you got it down for life. Anyway, AB um, is your standards there. And um, we use B. Now remember, if you're going to use B at the jack, you use B at the patch panel. If you use A at the patch panel and B at the jack, what you're going to have is you're going to have a crossover cable, not direct through. You want straight through when you're cabling. So this, this I researched this jack for a long time. This is a top-of-the-line jack, um, and uh, these are the only ones that we sell this, this design and it really works well and again we give a 15 year warranty on our cabling in Nova so if I put in old cheapo jacks uh, that you plug in two or three times or six months later fall apart then it's very expensive to go back and replace jacks and I remember once we tried uh, a certain type of jack from a manufacturer and I would say out of, out of 20 jacks six of them failed uh, the even test rate and again we test all our jacks um, and no matter how many we put in, we, we test them. Uh, it just takes a second longer. And it saves you from a go back. So anyway, let's do this one. So it's in place. It kind of has a little bit of wiggle room, but it's in place. And what you want to do is you want to get that white cable because that's the pattern. I think I'll do it a little more so it's easier. Again, this is sort of like a uh, balancing act here, holding the the tripod of the camera and getting this in there right. So I get as close as I can. I don't want a lot of slack in there. And I'm going to pull it down so it temporarily holds it in place. Right? Then I'm going to take my punch down tool. Now this is really a weird twisting of my arm. And it's come out already. bunch down to the other hand. Again, normally this goes very fast because uh, uh, I'm trying to show it to you and make sure it stays within uh, camera focus. It's taking it uh, ten times longer. But you push it down and and I tell you that didn't snap off because I was already snapping down on that blade, that area. You see? Already snapped down in there. So let's do the other colors. Let's do the brown. I already I should get a new jack. This is a an old throwaway jack. Okay, so I untwisted the brown. We're gonna do the brown. 
I always tell my salesmen live demos are dangerous. Hold it in place. See, it snaps right off. Again, jacks aren't made to be used more than once, punched down, and I punched down already on that other side on an earlier version of this video. And also to show you how the, the punch down tool made a noise. There you go. Then it comes with a little cap when you've done all the stuff you're supposed to do, all four pairs. You put the cap on and you snap it down and it holds it in place. But that's how it's done. That's what it looks like. Now, um, and you can see it in there, it's nice, clean, and everything else. On this side, you can see how I destroyed those little landing places when I was showing you how. You see it? It's kind of damaged. Anyway, that's why I didn't punch down right. Um, anyway, if I just wanted to push the wire in and not uh, cut it, I would use this side of the blade right here. Notice it doesn't have a cutting thing at all on it. Okay, the other one is 66 block. 66 punch down. So why do you need 66 punch down? Well, it's always good to have. So I'm gonna, I locked it in there. All right, see it? It's locked in. This is a 66 punch down. I mean 66 block. It's called a split 66. I don't know why they call it 66. It's one of the mysteries of life, I guess, that I don't care about. Uh, this, is, in fact, is called a split 66. If you look real close, these two are connected, but these two are not connected to these two. Insignificant detail for this video, but at any rate, if you were to bring the wire in, let me see if I can get the wire to come in. And remember the first wire coming in is a blue, but my blue I already cut off, so I'm going to bring in the orange pair. Notice I said pair, not wire. So I'm going to bring it in. I can get it to go. Again, it's kind of hard to hold this, and it's usually get a bigger. I should have thought this through before I did the video. So, just to show you, oh, it's a, the color code's wrong. It really bothers me. It's a white first. You wrap it around that little hook. I'm going to show it to you anyway, just with one. Anyway, you push it down on the 66 block. And it's not cut. That's okay, because this is what you use this blade for. Sometimes they don't cut, or sometimes they cut and they get stuck in there. So you pull out your, your little pick. And you go in there and you grab it. And of course, on videos everything fails. This is about the most awkward video I ever did because <laughs> nothing's working the way it's supposed to. Anyway, let's cut it again. I'm going to do it right so I can push down. There it is. And again, that's what you use this for. Is to get in there and pull out the loose cables. You can also go in there and do this. So let's say you punched it down on the wrong one and that happens every once in a while and you need to move it to one. Get in there with this. Get in there with this. And you grab it. You see how it grabbed it? 
you know, if you can see it, you see it grab the cable and then you pull it out. So to have those tools, sometimes that's a, another tool on to itself. It's, uh, you know, the little tools, sometimes people carry picks around. This is the best way, in my opinion, one less thing you to carry. It's right there when you need it. Uh, again, uh, Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. And uh, I guess the last thing I didn't show you is how to store it. You just drop your, your tool in there. You turn this and you push it down. You have to put the blade side up. And you put the flat side down. It's easier to push down on it. Push it down. You see? It's right in there. I guess that was it. And then when you shake it, it's not going to come out. It's not going to come out. The way you get it out is you squeeze this again. And of course, being new, it's kind of stiff. Um, again, thank you for looking at my imperfect video and prompt to video. You get a punch down tool, two blades, the puck, and the wire stripper. Um, best little wire stripper on earth. Um, uh, that's one of our products. Of course, we have another product that's just these two that we sell online. Got to make sure I get it in the center of the video there. And uh, thank you for being patient with this video. Again, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. And uh, please uh, follow us, like us, go to Facebook. But more important, please buy the product because it helps me to do more videos and stay in business. And of course, more videos means I will teach on subjects that should be vaguely interesting to you. And if they are, then you'll learn. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. And today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet. <laughs>